This video is part of a series of videos that covers the May 2023 paper, the Caravan Park Database for Unit 2, Create a System to Manage Information. And this is the first of two videos that covers Activity 6, and that's completion of the forms in Part B of the paper. In Part B, you get a new scenario. Let's just have a look at the scenario for this caravan park. Heatherburn Caravan Park has partially developed a database that will eventually merge with the database you created in Part A. The park has 50 pictures. A pitch is assigned to a caravan owner. There are three different pitch positions. Riverside, the pitch overlooks the river. Woodside, the pitch overlooks the wood and central, the pitch does not overlook the river or the wood. Owners have to pay a site fee and a council fee each year. The site fee depends on the pitch position. So riverside, the basic fee is plus 5%. Woodside, the basic fee plus 2%. And central, just the basic fee. Owners also purchase key fobs a key fob is needed to operate the car barrier. Owners must purchase between one and three key fobs. Just before we start looking at creating the forms, just some general information about uh, this part of the paper. The forms part is, and there are two forms that you need to create. The first form, form A, is an input form and it will involve some sort of validation, which I'm going to demonstrate uh, in a macro. It's a pretty straightforward form, and everybody should be able to achieve that quite easily. The second form, Form B, a little bit more complex. It's no validation or saving. It's not an input form. There's often some sort of data retrieval calculations, use of functions, the database functions, such as DLOOKUP, DSUM, DMAX, DMIN, so you must know how to use those before you go into the exam. And then there's usually something like a control with a combo box, something with a row source, a query attached to that. For both forms, you need to make sure you've got some idea of the formatting that you're going to use. And it should be the same formatting that you used in your report. So again, my advice is make sure you go into the exam with some idea of the formatting features that you're going to use. Keep it simple, keep it professional looking. The other sort of general thing is make sure you disable controls where there's no user input and that you provide user instructions on the form. These are things that the examiner is looking for. And on both forms, I usually take off the scroll bars, the navigation buttons and the record selectors to make sure they look like professional forms. Let's have a look at the activity then. You're advised to spend one hour, 10 minutes on this part of the exam. That's not a long time to create two forms. So again, my usual advice is make sure you practice these well before you go into the exam so that you can create these forms pretty quickly. Note, the structure of the tables provided should not be changed in any way. For example, do not add validation to the tables. Do not change the data types. You will only be required to use TBL owner, TBL position and TBL fee. And I'll have a quick look at those tables in a minute. Let's just have a look at the first form. We need to create an efficient interface that will facilitate database input by producing A, an input form to add an owner. The form should be ready for data entry. The surname must be present. The number of key fobs must be within the specified range. And that was, if you remember, from scenario one to three. Valid data should be appended to the owner table. A save message should display and the form should be cleared ready for next data entry. A suitable error message should appear where invalid data has been used. OK, so this is the database that is provided to you in Part B of the exam. And you see there are actually four tables, but you're only going to be using TBL fee, TBL owner and TBL position. 
So the first form is to add an owner. Let's just have a quick look at TBL owner. So we've got the owner ID, surname, address, postcode, mobile, on site, uh, start date, number of barrier forms. So before we actually look at creating this first form, the owner input form, here's one I created earlier just to see what we're going to be producing. And you can see I've got a nice clear title. I've got some instructions to the user where data input is required. Their owner ID was an auto number field, so I've disabled that so that the user can't try and enter an owner ID. I've then got controls where we're going to key in the surname, the address, the postcode, the mobile number, and the on site start date. And number of barrier fob keys and little reminder to the user that should be one two or three but it's going to be validated and when we click on the button save owner record it will save the data it will do the validation about the surname and the barrier key fobs and only save if it's valid data if it's invalid data it won't save but you'll get an error message to say what is invalid so to create this first form we're going to create and we're going to use the form wizard for this and we need to first of all select the table that our form is going to be based on and in this case TBL owner we need all those fields so we can just put them across as the selected fields I'm going to leave the form columnar and I would always give this FRM I'll call mine FRM owner one because I've already created one and let's uh, have a look at what we've got so this is the very basic form that's created and comment from the examiner usually is um, students leave them like this and it's very quick and easy to format these forms to make them appropriate as a user interface. I'll just do some quick formatting things uh, initially before we get on to doing the macro and the button. So in the property sheet for the form, I've just set data entry to yes. That means every time the form opens, it's ready for data entry. And I have set the navigation buttons to no. I have set the record selectors to no. And then finally, the scroll bars to neither.
the owner ID field I'm going to disable so that the user can't key any data in. Just do a bit more formatting before we put the button on. The next thing is to draw on the button and I'm going to use the control, the button control. But before I do that, just to show you that I've made sure the use control wizards is off. And now we're going to create the macro that's going to validate the surname being present and that the barrier key fobs is between one and three. So right mouse click on the button. Let me just drag this down a minute to see if you can see what we're doing. Select Macro Builder and here we are ready to start our macro. The first thing we're going to validate is that the surname is present. So we're going to use the if is null open bracket surname close bracket and then the action is in the message box I put owner surname must be present and I've given a title to the boxes and I've used this uh, throughout the validation and that just says invalid data. We then add an else if and this is where we are now going to validate the number of barrier key fobs. So we've got else if num barrier key fobs less than one or num barrier key fobs greater than three then and then in the message box the message number of barrier key fobs must be between one and three and again you'll notice in the title I've got invalid data. Now in this form we've only got those two pieces of validation but if you had another then you add another else if so you keep using else if until you come to the last part of your macro where you want to save your record and the last one is just an else not an else if so it's always if followed by else if else if else if depending on how many uh, little validations you've got and then the final one is just else and in the else we're going to use run command save record 
and the message is owner record is saving and again a title which tells the user what's happening saving record and then finally just to make sure that we go to a, a, another blank record the last command we're going to use is go to record and make sure it goes to you can use next or new there I believe and then just save your macro and close it down and then can we just have a look at the form to make sure everything's functioning correctly so we'll just test the form now first thing is I'll leave the surname blank And there's the owner record that I've just created. So that now completes the owner input form. The next video will look at form B.